Okay, hello everyone. Um, today I'm joined with Rosie Kane, um, who is an astrobiologist at the University of Edinburgh. So we're going to have a bit of a chat to her about what her job is and how she got into it. So Rosie, do you want to start off by just telling us a bit about you, um, so what you do and where you work? Yeah, um, so hi everyone. As Sophie just said, I'm Rosie. Um, I'm a PhD researcher at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and I research in astrobiology, so essentially helping to further um, search the life beyond Earth. That's awesome. So can you tell me a bit about what your day-to-day -day job involves? It really varies. Um, so currently I'm writing up my PhD thesis, which is a big book of all of my research findings. Um, before this, I used to share my time between doing lab work and analysing data from my experiments, um, which was essentially getting the results for this thesis. Um, so when I was in the lab, I used to grow bacteria and I would expose them to the different conditions we might find on Mars uh, or icy moons in our solar system. Uh, these kind of environments are called extreme environments, as they're too harsh for humans to survive in. But hardy, tiny micro microorganisms like bacteria can grow and even thrive in these horrible conditions. So my experiments look at how bacteria respond to environments with lots of these extreme stresses all at once. So, for example, on the surface of Mars, you would get hit by a lot of UV radiation. It's very, very cold and it's covered in toxic salts. And we don't really know about how, the, how all of these stresses being added together affect how any form of life might grow. So this is where my research comes in and I'm trying to address this problem. Uh, in terms of doing data analysis, that's all on a computer. Um, so I use a lot of different statistical software to analyse my data and look at how these bacteria might grow. So it's quite good that I get to split my day between lab work, uh, data analysis, then writing my results and drinking a lot of coffee. <laughs> you that you didn't expect so any organisms that survived perhaps in a certain environment that you weren't expecting yeah um i found actually for my final chapter of my my thesis um a bacteria that grows really well under really acidic conditions um which normally it's not been found to you um so but yeah that's quite cool wow that's exciting so you're <laughs> new things that's really cool um, So could you tell me a bit about what um, inspired you to pursue astrobiology and ha like how old you were or whether there were any other people that influenced your decision? Yeah, um, so I've always been interested in space um, pretty much as long as I can remember. Um, so my dad got me into astronomy when I was really young. Um, he used to take me outside with a telescope to look at the night sky. Um, we used to watch things like Sky at Nights and lots of space related films. So I'm a massive Star Wars fan uh, because of that. <laughs> Um, and then after finishing school and college, I went on to study observational astronomy at university. Um, and there I had the chance in my first year to take a module in astrobiology. And I realized that was a thing and something that you can study and thought yeah. it was amazing. Um, so I found it really interesting and spent lots of time doing extracurricular reading about it. Um, and I just decided that was really cool and that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and so did you, what kind of processes did you do along the way to kind of pursue that further? So obviously you, you had the module, um, were you able, <coughs> excuse me, to do any kind of extracurricular stuff or anything? Did you speak to anybody else about how you might pursue um, astrobiology further? Yep, um, so I took two free online courses um, in astrobiology during the final year of my degree. Um, which really helped further my knowledge about it. Um, and I read a few textbooks from the library as well. Um, and then once I finished my, P my um, degree, I contacted my now PhD supervisor, who's a very big name in the field of astrobiology. Um, and I've just finished reading his textbook. Um, and I was able to go on a field trip, which was, was organized by his research group to Sardinia. Um, oh it was really cool. <laughs> So we got to explore the microbiology of different caves there, um, how they use the Mars research, and also how astronauts have been using caves to prepare for space missions. 
Um, so it was all really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that alongside, um, I worked in a science centre, so I was giving planetarium shows, with, with sharing knowledge about the night sky, um, with a bit of an astrobiology twist. Yeah. Um, so that kind of like furthered my interests and my passion for the subject. So after that, I applied for a PhD with my now PhD supervisor, um, and was successful. Yeah, how oh, brilliant. Well, that's really good. It's promising to hear that those extra little bits that you did do pay off and kind of give you that little nudge to pursue what you wanted. Um, were there any kind of, you said spoken really positive about it, but I was wondering if there were any challenges that you faced along the way and how perhaps you maybe overcame those? Uh, well, for me, my biggest challenge was that I went from an undergraduate degree in astronomy to using a microbiology skills for a PhD. So I kind of went from looking up through a telescope to looking down through a microscope, <laughs> yeah. uh, which was a massive step. <laughs> um, but I found just perseverance and being interested in what you're studying um, kind of helps you with that extra push to like do the catching up. Um, so yeah, after all, I put the work in and then finally felt like I understood enough biology to feel comfortable um, in this field and understand my research which is good <laughs> yeah brilliant. yeah I think when you're interested in something it's it helps so much with the motivation um so could you perhaps tell me what your favorite part of your job is and why it's your favorite yeah, um, my favourite part of my job is definitely talking about my research field, um, because who doesn't want to hear about space and searching for aliens? <laughs> so I love doing outreach and public engagement. Um, I've got to do quite a few cool things throughout my PhD. Um, I got to give a talk um, at a NASA conference in America and visit a NASA facility. Um, I got to travel to lots of exciting places across the world um, and even develop my own astrobiology educational lesson plans. That we've got to use in schools and at science festivals um, and it really keeps the job fun um, so it's something that I would totally recommend to anyone in like looking for any career um, definitely builds up good skills and there's a lot of fun to be had. Yeah <laughs> that's really good that you're able to do lots of different stuff and mix up your day it kind of sounds really volatile in different aspects that you can do. Yeah. <laughs> maybe been your most unexpected experience um so that not necessarily the, a discovery that you've made with your research but just anything along the way that perhaps you didn't expect um would come out of doing your phd yeah um i think generally the most unexpected thing has been how supportive everyone in research is of each other um i didn't expect people to be unsupportive but just when you go into the research environment, everyone is there to help you. Everyone kind of comes together and people go out of their way to help and support you. Um, and it was quite overwhelming. Like I'm really thankful for everyone that I worked with, um, that it's a big community. Cause I don't know when you see these separate scientists, you think, oh, they work on their own. And mm. like, you don't think about the bigger team that all works together. Um, but yeah, it was really nice kind of coming into that environment and working together with so many people. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you don't want to be too isolated and allow yeah. <laughs> people around. Um, so I was wondering what you might see as an important character trait of someone that is an astrobiologist. Um, I would say kind of it would relate to anyone that was looking to do some kind of research as a career would just be to be passionate and excited about what you study because um, there's always going to be times like in any job it might get a bit difficult it might seem like everything's going wrong like maybe you can't cope I mean it's just stress it happens to anyone in any career but if you're studying something that you really care about it'll be so much easier to approach these problems being positive and proactive um, so you'll get over those moments so much quicker and just be able to carry on with your work. It just helps you enjoy what you're doing a lot more. Yeah, that's really good. I think yeah. that's really important for people to know that you are going to have some tough days, but to just persevere through them. Yeah. Um, so you've kind of touched upon it as well already, but is there any advice that you might offer to somebody looking to maybe pursue astrobiology? Yeah, I would say follow your interests and passions and don't be put off by negativity 
or comparing yourself to other people. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out and speak to people for advice and help because people in research have all been through the same thing. We all had to get to this point and we're more than happy to help. Um, so I just say reach out to people, ask questions um, and yeah, speak to people that you think you might want to work with, that you just want to hear more about what they're doing. Um, and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to answer you. Yeah, I mean, everybody, like you said, likes talking about what they do in their research. So it, it would be nice for them to hear that somebody else is interested. Um, so a bit about you as well. Um, do you have any other hobbies outside of work that aren't related to your research? <laughs> well, when I'm not holidaying to Mars, um, <laughs> um, I enjoy running. Um, so I really find that going for a run in the morning is great motivation to kind of have a productive day and it clears your head. Um, and I'm hopefully going to be running the London Marathon this year. Um, uh, I enjoy crafts and sewing uh, and watching anything Disney. <laughs> um, I'd say kind of doing outreach is a bit like a hobby as well because I like to do it in my spare time but I find it for fun um, and also stargazing when it's clear outside. Yeah brilliant oh it's good to hear that you still have time to fit in all those things as well amongst all your research. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just one final question is just whether you have a role model or had one growing up and why they were your role model. Uh, I would say that maybe my family are my role models. I would say I have just one. Um, like I said before, my dad got me into astronomy. Yeah. Um, and I love that I get to answer his questions about space now. And I'm like, I'm the expert. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my mum's always been there to support me through all of it. Um, my sister pursued a career in research before me and kind of paved the way for me to start my own career, but in a different field. Um, and she's just been like a fountain of knowledge and given me so much advice about a career in research. So yeah, I'm thankful to all of them for helping me get to where I am. And yeah, I'd say that they're all my role models. Oh, that's <laughs> Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Rosie. That was really good, great and really interesting to hear about kind of your journey along the way and what led you to become the astrobiologist. Um, so yeah, I just want to wish you all the best of luck in the future. And thank you ever so much for taking part in this with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>